What's new from Fujifilm this season are two small things that pack quite a punch. We've got a camera, the X-S20, which is essentially a supercharged successor to the X-S10. We've also got a completely new lens, an ultra-wide 8mm f3.5 prime. The camera's price has been bumped up slightly to $12.99, its predecessor, the X-S10, launched for $9.99, and like most cameras, it's not the easiest thing to tell apart the X-S20 from its predecessor, at least not without taking a pretty close look. There are some significant tweaks to the hardware, but the sensor is the same 26.1 megapixel X-Tron CMOS 4 sensor. What Fuji's done with this is upgrade the processor to the very latest X-Processor 5, the very same one in the X-H2s and the X-T5. That is what's supercharging this sensor to do things the X-S10 was previously not capable of. Now, to be honest, it doesn't really make a huge difference in stills, but it very much does in video. This can now do 4K 60p, and even 6.2K 3x2 open gate up to 30p. If you plan on shooting any anamorphic content, that's gonna give you quite a lot more image. And even at these resolutions and frame rates, it's full on 10 bit 422 with the option of all intra compression. The only thing that's a bit conditional codec wise is you can only shoot in H265 when doing 6.2K. For slow motion, you've got 240p in full HD and that's about it. No 4K 120p and there is a minor 1.18 crop in 4K 60p. Now, for such a small camera, these are some heavy hitting video specs. 4K 60p and 6.2K in general is pretty resource hungry. When you run that amount of data within a body this small, naturally you're gonna have some concerns with things running a bit hot. And here's one of those lovely little hardware tweaks I was hinting at. See that mounting interface on the rear panel? The XS20 is compatible with the Fan 001 accessory, which converts this to being actively cooled. It's the exact same fan module for the X-H2 and X-H2S, so if you already have one of those, it's compatible with this new camera. One last sweet piece of news for Pro Video is the availability of the new F-Log2 on the X-S20. Again, something we first saw on the X-H2S, so really this is quite a workhorse for video. There is a separate video mode on the dial that appeals to a slightly different genre of filming. By default, shooting in vlog mode is the same as video mode, you'd still have manual control over your settings. What's different here is the UI. There is a dedicated touch toggle vlog menu, which can be operated without leaving the shooting screen and is still very accessible when shooting selfie style. On this exact menu, you may also have noticed some features that are exclusive to vlog mode. Background defocus, for example, simply locks your aperture to its wider setting, so do pay attention to your exposure when doing this, because if your shutter speed and ISO are set to manual, it will not override and auto-compensate for you. Product's priority mode will have the autofocus rack from your face to any item in the foreground when you hold it up in frame. It works very well, and I actually found it surprisingly effective and helpful because the product doesn't even have to cover your face. It will just favor whatever's in the foreground. It's sort of like an opposite to face priority AF, if you come to think of it. The autofocus algorithms in this have seen a massive improvement from its predecessor. Subject recognition is a lot more advanced, all our capture solving over the years is finally paying off. Well, that and also the twice as powerful X processor 5 in here powering it. But it's reached the point of having automatic subject detection and tracking in auto mode. So an even more auto, auto mode. For still shooters, aside from the better AF, the X-S20 also has all 19 film simulations currently released, and that includes Nostalgic Negative. Fuji is also claiming twice the number of shots possible on a single battery, thanks to a major hardware upgrade hidden away from sight, and that's the battery. It takes W235 batteries now, the battery which in my circle is still colloquially referred to as the X-T4 battery. One last thing worth noting is the X-S20 now joins the X-T200 and X-A7 as one of the few Fuji cameras with support for USB video class, meaning it can function as a plug-and-play USB webcam. No additional software required, so yes, you can jump into that video meeting with one of the 19 film simulations applied. Oh, alright. Can't wait to be the only one to show up with a film look 
It's a classic negative kind of day. Now the new lens. Let's take a quick look at it. This 8mm prime is the widest prime lens in Fuji's X-mount lineup. 8mm on an APS-C is equivalent to 12mm full frame, which horizontally gives you a field of view that's 112 degrees wide. It is so wide that simply holding it up at arm's length is enough to make your face look absolutely tiny in the frame. Now, the lens itself is also rather tiny, a bit more than 200 grams, small enough to make you feel ripped off if it was a cupcake. If you compare it against the one other Fuji lens capable of reaching 8 millimeters, this, the 8 to 16 f2.8 zoom, the size difference is almost hilarious. Now, yes, the 8 to 16 is a zoom lens and it's slightly brighter at f2.8, but if you were contemplating the 8 to 16 just for the ultra wide 8 millimeter end, then this new prime is much smaller, much lighter, and nearly half the price. It's $7.99 for the 8mm prime versus $14.99 for the zoom. Image quality wise, I'm not seeing much of a difference between the new 8mm and the 8 16 at the wide end. It's got plenty of resolution for how small your details are likely going to end up in the frame. The sharpness does fall off a bit towards the edges, but nothing worth complaining about. What is quite a unique superpower of this 8mm prime though is it's got filter threads up front. It can take screw-on filters, which are rarely ever possible for lenses this wide. And we're not talking humongous 82mm filters. This takes nice little 62mm filters. So that's one thing very worth thinking about for this lens. I think it's no coincidence that Fuji launched this lens together with the X-S20. Small, capable camera small, capable lens. Granted, it does make an excellent vlogging setup, but for any use case where mobility is either desired or required, I suppose smaller is indeed better.